as much as an honor it is to be here to talk about the company, it's equally an honor for me to lead this team of phenomenal people in upstate New York. Edoe Materials is a company, a venture-backed company, that was spun out of uh, Cornell University based on about 15 years of research there. And we're a small group of people working on what we believe to be a very big idea. And that's what I'm here to tell you about today. What I'd like everybody to do first is close your eyes and think about an issue facing our planet right now and put an image in your mind of what that looks like. Everybody got that? Open your eyes. How many people thought of a tree? And my wife doesn't count, because she's seen me give this talk. So nobody really thinks of trees being a significant problem to our planet. At E2E Materials, we think a lot about trees. We think about the fact that the humanity has deforested half the planet since we've been around. We think about the fact that the global population in my lifetime alone has more than doubled to 7 billion people. And that, in, in fact, if the populations in India and China furnish their homes, schools, and buildings the way we do in North America, we would run out of trees faster than the most pessimistic pundits are predicting that we will run out of oil. Now, it's very hard to fathom that somebody can possibly cut down the last tree on Earth. But it is pretty easy to imagine how this dynamic is going to impact the forest products industry, this commoditized industry. And at E2E Materials, we look at the wood composites world that goes into producing all of our furniture and cabinetry and the fixtures inside of our homes, schools, and buildings. And this industry is struggling to support that, and they're not even thinking about the wood supplies. They're thinking about the fact that they need a solution to eliminate the formaldehyde out of these products. Formaldehyde is the glue that goes into these energy-intensive panels that hold the wood chips together. It's a carcinogen, and it's being limit eliminated from these products, or legislated out of these types of products. And that leads to us a situation that we need to reinvent ourselves. This industry cannot supply the global demand and sustain itself uh, with that. So, and it cannot incrementally improve itself out of the problem. So when we look at it, we, we take a totally different take on it. Rather than wood chips and toxic resin systems, we use soy protein, an abundant product around the world today. And in fact, if we supplied all 7 billion people with furniture and everything else around the world, we'd only use 3.6% of the uh, available soy protein today. So that's a, that's a good step forward. And instead of a tree, we use rapidly growing grass fibers, plants like flax, canaf, jute, and, and, and hemp, that all grow very rapidly and actually produce 20 times the fiber content than an acre of trees. So that gives us depth in the supply chain, again, to supply that, that global industry. And our technology gives us the ability to bring these things together in a way that makes them extremely strong, much stronger than traditional products today. So over here, I'm going to hope this demo works, um, I've got a piece of conventional particle board that just breaks when you go onto it. Here uh, is our product called i -Core. And this is about half of the amount of material in it, and uh, I'm going to just you know, it's not going to go anywhere. And uh, to be able to talk about, thank you. Um, it's really strong stuff. So when we make a material, use a material that's stronger, we make products that are lighter, better, and higher performing than what we're using today. And more than that, our material comes together in a way that is much more energy effective than the wood composites that are out there. Actually, we only use 19% of the energy that goes into the wood, compo wood composites industry today. Now, that equates to about 42 billion pounds of CO2. And that's a big number. What does that mean? Well, that's equal to the environmental impact of every Toyota Prius on the road today. So we think that's pretty cool to have that type of, that type of capability. And when we take this strong material that's sustainable and safe and a very efficient manufacturing process, we're able to bring those together to make exciting new products that are safe, sustainable, and most importantly, cost-effective. In fact, my team had a great time making these letters up here on the stage that you see here today. Thank you. Now, this last product is something not made by us. 
This, you may recognize this as a product that you could have bought at a big box store, taken home and tried to assemble. We think this epitomizes the problem in the industry. How this product is made is the wood chips are shipped from Northwest United States or Canada over to China where they're matched with petrochemical resin systems that are derived out of the Middle East, put together into products, packaged, shipped all the way back across the ocean, trucked across the country, and when it lands on a shelf in upstate New York, it has over 21,000 miles on it collectively. Now that's three quarters of the way around the planet. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to understand that as the cost of oil goes up, the cost of every one of those miles goes up as well, and this becomes an unsustainable business model. We take a different take on that. Two months ago, we announced our first major production facility in Geneva, New York. We're revitalizing a 45-year-old idled facility there to put our new products that are in demand with our customers into, into practice and to put them out into the marketplace. But more than that, we're also implementing what we call a concept called regionally integrated manufacturing. And that is sourcing the fiber sources and the soy around our facility. Uh, we're starting with flax in upstate New York. And what we're able to do there for every single manufacturing job that we create, we create five agricultural jobs. And we're able to source this flax uh, uh, in upstate New York and develop that into a supply chain. And when we do that, we dramatically reduce that 21,000 miles and we create a pocket of economic impact that is greater than any other manufacturing facility out there today. And not only that, when we as we grow our business, our vision is to ship those products within a 500-mile radius around our manufacturing facility. And that takes that 21,000 miles that are on those products today and creates a cost-competitive, cost-effective solution that has about 700 miles on it when it lands on a regional shelf. And this becomes our regionally integrated mo model that we can then take and duplicate around the country and leverage one of 28 different fiber sources that we're able to use for our products, produce and ship within that to create a regional economy. So when people come to us and say that American manufacturing is dead, that we've lost 5 million jobs in America, we say bullshit. It's all innovation can make this happen and we can create green, true green collar American and agricultural jobs by thinking smarter and servicing, that, servicing our customers with greater products that are cheaper, smarter and easier to make. And moreover, the solution is not just a, an American solution. It's really an innovation that can be duplicated around the world and leverage supply chains and, and give people and empower communities to make their own products with the technology that are consumed in that area that allows them to customize them for the actual ap applications in that model, and that's our vision. It's a concept we call regionally integrated manufacturing. Uh, the vision of E2E materials is pretty bodacious. Uh, my team is working to safely, sustainably, and profitably house and furnish the world, and we're doing it through our technology and the concept we call regionally integrated manufacturing. Thank you very much.